Father's Day 2024. I'm going to use my day to do a clay check, piston and valve clearance clay check on my short block using my new Trick Flow 170cc runners, 61cc combustion chamber heads that I brought home yesterday. I'm going to clay check the piston and valve clearance with the cam and everything, the new push rods, the new rockers, and make sure I'm going to have enough safety margin where I don't have to fly cut the pistons. So I am anticipating having to cut eyebrows into the pistons to make them fit. Here's the short block. We've got Felpro head gaskets on it. There are the heads. We're going to throw those on here. And I'm paranoid, so I'm going to do multiple pistons at once. I believe trick flow valves should come in at an angle and should be right in here. So I'm not really sure where we're going to put the clay, but we're going to clay a bunch of the pistons and check check uh, clearance. No surprise, we're going as cheap as humanly possible. We just have some dollar store Play-Doh. We're going to stick it in here, see what happens. All right, so I got two containers of Play-Doh. I just picked four random pistons that are not at top dead center. Give a little room here. Uh, I got number one, number three, number five, and number six. And I'm checking more than one because I'm paranoid. And I just want to see what they have to say. Junior just finished setting the lash on our rockers. Got our heads bolted on. We brought our four cylinders we're testing to uh, the base circle of the cam. We set the lash on the rockers. And now we're going to turn the engine over and see what happens but based on how it felt turning it over with clay and the four pistons and the three of the four sets of rockers tightened it feels like it's turning over really well so at least at the minimum we do not have piston to valve contact right now it doesn't seem we just finished turning the engine over two full rev revolutions which is four turns for the crank uh, two full turns for the cam, just to make sure, just to see what our piston to valve looks like for sure. Now we're gonna undo all this and pull the heads and measure our clay. Okay, here you can see where our big exhaust valve came down and good God almighty, that exhaust valve is filling up every millimeter of this cylinder. Look at that. Oh my God, I can't believe we don't have sidewall clearance for that thing. On this piston, it doesn't look like the exhaust valve really, really hit anything. There's no real indentions in the clay. On this one, you get a pretty, a better idea of where the valves were. This is going to be our clearance, I think. The outside of the valves came down in here. Or is that where it pressed up into the combustion chamber? I don't see anything that indicates we're going to have any clearance, but... Chris is still pulling the other head off, and we'll check it. All right, so on, upon further inspection, this is where our pop-up pistons are actually just smashing the clay up into the combustion chamber. There is a little bit of clay residue down here, and that, oh, there's some clay right there. That is where, that is what that shape is. I'm not actually seeing any valve in Impressions anywhere in this clay so I don't think we're gonna have any clearance issues those valves should have come at an angle down towards this direction these valve imprints should have been down in here somewhere we should have had two grooves down in here and all I see is where the combustion chamber was and crushed our clay we're gonna check the other head just to be safe so the clay on this side has given us a much better picture of our piston to valve clearance. I like it. I don't, I'm not sure I believe it. I'm not sure I trust it, but you can see the clay is crushed up into the combustion chamber here, smashed all the clay up here. Here are our valve cutouts. That is a ton of clearance. That's like three eighths of an inch of clearance. That is a lot of clearance. But I'm looking at the angle of this really kind of makes me think see this piston's the same 
I'm thinking our piston to valve clearance issues may be up here up top looking at the angle of this. It looks like the, the, the valve is coming in at an angle. I'm worried about clearance up here. We may have to bolt one of these back on and check and put the put the clay up higher but the bottom portion there's the intake valve there's the exhaust valve intake exhaust that looks like a ton of clearance but you can see that it is kind of smashed at an angle I'm worried the top of the valve might hit so I think we're going to check again all right so we tilted the engine up where it's just facing up now so this clay will stay because the clay was wanting to slide down I think that's what happened the clay all slid down to the bottom half of the pistons and stayed so I've got a pretty good layer of clay in the entire top half of this it's probably more than a quarter inch maybe three-eighths of an inch all the way around I want a valve impression the top half of the piston because the bottom half of the piston looked like it had tons of clearance this is what worries me because the valve looked like it was tilted this way it looked like it might have hit might have wanted to hit near the top we're going to find out all right just finished setting the lash on our rockers again we're going to spin the whole thing over and we're going to check our clay depth i think it's safe to say we've got clearance this one got a little deformed it was partially stuck to the head when we took it off but this one stayed in place and if i can get this to zoom that is our piston to valve clearance right there. Well, I want you to just zoom in. Let me see. That is how much piston to valve clearance we have. That is quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and get a micrometer on it. But I'm going to say it's a quarter inch or more. Good. You recording this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Here we go, at the thinnest part, we've got 0.245. Screenshot that, I'll hit the little camera button and screenshot that. This number three piston got a little deformed, but we have this about the same result. At the thinnest point, we got a quarter inch of piston to valve clearance. You can see how thick that is. Watch your hand. And see how thick that is when put down even if you push this back down so we got lots of valve clearance here I'm shocked it doesn't seem right um, in fact it doesn't seem possible but oh well I guess it is what it is so I'm gonna take it take this as a victory all right guys it is later in the day on Father's Day we've already packed it in for the day but I need you to disregard everything you've seen in this video so far. I'm an idiot. We all know I'm an idiot. Uh, a friend of mine just pointed out that all that measuring I just did, all the piston valve clearance means nothing because I was using hydraulic roller lifters. They were not pumped up and full of oil. Um, I had no way to control the spring rate. Uh, hydraulic lifters tend to compress when they run into resistance. Um, so I probably do not have a quarter inch of clearance. Probably don't have nearly 0.25 inches of clearance. I have to order a hydraulic, or I mean a solid roller lifter and redo all my piston to valve clearance. So yeah, oops, see, told you I'm dumb. Don't do what I do. This is not an instructional video. I'm strictly here for your entertainment. It's a couple of days later and we're back. We have our solid roller lifter installed, and we're going to recheck our piston to valve clearance with the proper lifter. Sadly, I only have one, so we're going to have to do the intake valve first, then the exhaust valve, and we're just going to have to take it apart, put it back together, and rinse, wash, repeat. And we're just going to let you know what the results are. And here is the result for the intake valve. You can see I just can't see where I'm aiming here but I just cut this in half with a razor blade and this right here right there is our piston valve clearance on the intake I am going to measure it but it looks like it's about the same I don't really see a difference it looks like about a quarter inch it's almost impossible 
to do all this and record at the same time but as you can see it now says point two point two six it says we have more piston to valve clearance and you can see where the caliper was I measured right there at that very thinnest point and uh, yeah we've got a quarter inch of clearance now to check the intake valve just to be safe and while we're here and I've forgotten I am going to uh, do a, a wear pattern check on the top of these valves with our rockers using these push rods to see our push rod length to make sure it's okay and if it's not I have a push rod length checker over there I'm going to use but I'm hoping this will just come out in the middle and these push rods will be okay considering they were with this engine and being run with it or these heads at least on another engine Well, it's kind of hard to see. There's our wear pattern. It's not quite down the middle. It's slightly offset to the inside. Uh, it's not bad. But uh, I'm going to do a couple more here soon since I can barely tell what's going on with that, with that pattern. The paint marker dried, but it just didn't wear. I guess I didn't turn it over enough. I'm calling it now, considering the exhaust valve barely touched the clay pretty sure we're gonna have plenty of clearance Chris is cutting open our clay so we can measure it I'm gonna say we're pretty good there that's a solid quarter inch just about like the other side the exhaust valve gave us 0.2675 clearance that is more with the solid roller lifter than with the hydraulics that we were worried about collapsing on us. So I'm going to go ahead and call it and say that we have more than enough piston to valve clearance and we can start assembling this thing. That's it for today. Uh, someone here is going away for camp next week and won't be here. So while he's gone, I'll probably do things like clean up the engine, clean up the heads, uh, get it ready for final assembly. I'll probably put the heads on, the intake, check uh, check all the runners, see if I want to do any port work on it. But I'm um, probably going to wait till he gets back if I end up doing any port work. But that's all we've got for today. We'll be back in a little while to do the rest of it. I'm here now without Chris Jr. Uh, just doing some simple little things like checking uh, whether or not I need to port these heads or not. And when I just sat these in here, I thought, oh, that's a problem. That's not good, but the thing is, there's all sorts of space up here, so when you line these up where they actually belong, the port on the trick flow heads is actually larger than the intake gasket. And I think what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, the intake gasket definitely intrudes on the intake ports all the way around. And you can see how this thing is kind of pre-cut, kind of perforated. I'm going to knock those out when I do my final engine install. It would appear that I have the wrong exhaust gaskets. You can see how far off this thing is. This is horrible. And it overlaps the top too, but there's no real way to get it up there with the bolt hole still lining up. So if you don't have any bolts in it, <clears throat> the ports do okay. They fit relatively well. so. I may have to trim out the bottom of these bolt holes a little bit to get these to line up to sit straight. You can see what the bolt holes do when you try to line it up. That's frustrating. I did not have, these are Ford Motorsport gaskets too. So I guess they're just, maybe Trick Flow needs their own gaskets I wasn't aware of. As you can see, they, they will fit the ports fairly well, but not the bolt holes. That's frustrating. I'm probably just going to trim out these bolt holes and uh, probably just RTV them in place. Yeah, this is definitely a gasket issue. Here are the headers that are on my car, or going on my car. And you can see again, the port, the gasket is large enough pretty much for these headers and for the trick flow heads, but nothing lines up. If you line up the ports, the bolt holes are nowhere close. If you line up the bolt holes, 
the ports are completely off. That's terrible. So I'm either going to get some different gaskets or I'm just going to trim these a little bit. When I bring my intake gaskets over here, they just ever so slightly intrude into the intake runner. So again, I think I'm just going to knock out this first little ring in here. And I think this will be fine. I don't think I'm even going to do any port work. I have the time, but really <clears throat> these ports seem to match up almost perfectly. The trick flow intake runners are all within a couple thousandths of each other. They're measuring 1.21. The Victor Jr. intake kind of surprised me. They are all measuring really close to each other, but they're 1.13. So I may have to come in here and clean up the Victor Jr. a little bit. I don't think I'm going to touch the heads. This is 1.16 right there at the opening. But I'm going to try to match these up just a little bit better since I have the time. The engine's not going in it for a few weeks. Dang it, I keep going back and forth. These fastest cast heads are pretty rough inside. All the runners are pretty rough. They're not bad. They're pretty even. But they're just rough and ugly, but I really don't want to take the head apart and get into the head and have to deal with the head. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to wait till Junior gets back and I think I'm going to show him how to open up the ports on this. Show him a little bit of aluminum porting, um, but I really just don't want to mess with the heads. I'm not going to be setting any world records or anything. I'm not going to be racing for any money, so I don't need every tenth of a horsepower from porting the heads yeah i think i'm just gonna we're gonna port this just to make it flow evenly and steadily do what we can without any major changes the intake i can port this and just blow it out and it's fine i don't have to worry about taking the valves apart and all that so i'm gonna leave the heads alone port the intake well i'm out here trying to clean up my intake and clean up old gasket off my heads and kind of get them polished up a little and I was using this stuff, which was insane for three or four seconds. Uh, you get to push the trigger two or three times and it's completely empty. So I cleaned part of a valve cover and the face of a head before it went empty. So don't recommend. That was $13. Now I need to clean the rest of my heads and my nasty, dirty Victor Jr. intake. And it's either going to take me eight hours of hand scrubbing or about a thousand dollars worth of CRC. Good times. I finally did what I should have done from the beginning and broke out the cheap oven cleaner. Uh, I get three times or four times as much for half the price and it's doing twice the job. I forgot to get a before video of the combustion chambers but they were pretty dirty. Typical of a used cylinder head but uh, that one sprayed with a little oven cleaner, hand wiped it. It was worse than that one coming clean really quick well that's annoying I didn't realize these trick flow heads had some kind of coating on them I thought they were just really dull gray unpolished aluminum they've clearly got some kind of primer or paint on them either the brake cleaner the oven cleaner or both peeled it and made part of it run and now we've got two different finishes on the head which is annoying I didn't realize that I would like it if they were just all dull gray all the way around or all nice polished aluminum. But now I've got a mix. I don't like it. This day keeps getting worse. My local parts store was out of the degreaser that I wanted that was going to help finish off my heads and intake. Um, so I went to another little local store and they recommended this. They told me it did all the things. You know, cleans barbecue grills. No does absolutely nothing except i mean pretty sure it's a good polisher because it's just grease in a can it just greases everything up it's like wd-40 that's about it probably a pretty good lubricant um, you can't get it off anything it sticks to everything i had to go scrub some stuff with uh, hot water and soap just to get it off it makes the shiny stuff shiny and clean or cleaner looking but it does nothing it just polishes up the dirt and grease junior still gone at camp uh, it's a new day I needed kind of a win today so I just did some little things like my trick flow 
well filler cap my trick flow valve covers which were black over black and the ends of my trick flow heads nothing major just a little paint marker uh, to fill them in it's just decorative it doesn't really help me accomplish any goals towards getting my engine together but it felt good without junior here there's not a whole lot i'm going to do as far as actually getting this engine together but the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to oil and tap every bolt hole in the block and even the valve cover bolts on the heads make sure all these threads are nice and clean and lubricated to keep rust out of them and i'm going to do every single bolt on this engine first bolt hole up here above number one um, I was able to put it in by hand uh, pretty pretty good thread pretty easy to <clears throat> to tap by hand or but uh, you can see it's pretty dirty so that's why we do this that's probably some old RTV or something in there this top bolt hole by number five is absolutely crusted and nasty I'm gonna put some oil down it, tap it a few more times if you ever come up with this actual dried crusted rust or anything other than the normal oil or grease yeah keep going until it's clean this is not an instructional video and I do not take responsibility for anyone outside of this household but a little bit of a pro tip or semi pro tip or amateur tip or whatever I am when doing these on a Ford small block, the top bolts, uh, they're dead ends. Uh, they're, you just run the tap till it doesn't turn anymore and you're done. The bottom holes go into water jackets. If you are not careful, you can lose a short little tap like this inside the block and never recover it. I almost did that a few seconds ago. Don't do that. Just, great, I dropped it. Anyway, just run it down to where the threads are just about to disappear inside the bolt hole and then back it out if you try to go too far and it goes beyond the threads you're never getting it back here's a good example don't go any further than this that's plenty deep and if you go more about another half inch you're going to run out of thread and you're going to lose the entire thing and you'll never get it back and uh i don't think it'll come all the way out the other side and i don't think your engine will cool another not pro tip uh, make sure you get this to sit in here just like a bolt and that you're getting it in the threads these taps will cut through the old threads if you cross thread it making new threads and while i support that and actively do that a lot of times i'll tap my own new threads and a lot of things do not ever do that in an engine that's bad look this is how this should turn this is a fresh tap this is about how it should go now you get a little deeper there's a little bit of active resistance but if you're if you look down in a bolt hole and it looks like there's nice clean thread and you can see the thread and you've got resistance stop back it out make sure this thing is going in just like a bolt do not cut new threads that hole is pretty nice all right all the bolt holes are tapped and uh, here we are just hand tightening down one of our ARP head bolts. And uh, it's just going right on in. You can take these all the way down by hand as far as I need to and bottom them out without any drama. Once the bolt holes are nice and clean, easy going. I think we all know I do not advocate buying unnecessary stuff, but... I am going to tell you, do not use a die from a tap and die set on your head bolts. Clean out the threads by hand with a rag if there's old RTV or something. If there is damage to the thread that you think you would need to cut new threads on your head bolts, scrap it. ARP will sell a single bolt, I think two packs and then full kits. Do not play around with these. I am dumb. We all know this. Don't do what I do. So when I cleaned this engine for initial assembly, I, I did tap these holes, but I guess I didn't leave any oil in them. Most of these holes are now full of rust. You can see that one's still dripping 
a weeping rusty WD-40. So don't do that. Make sure to oil the holes when you tap them and then re-oil them if they're going to sit so they don't get this way. Also, don't be like me and spray the front of the block with nothing in the bolt holes because then you get all sorts of nasty old crusted paint that comes out of them. Which, I mean, the tap handle's fine. It's just, it's just extra work you got to do. Also, some of these front bolt holes go into water jackets. And I always forget which ones they are until I almost lose a tap inside the block. Don't do that. Remember, just to the edge of the threads and stop. Don't forget the bolt holes on your front timing cover. And then I've got to move on to the oil pan bolt holes on the bottom of the block. There are two different sizes of these things. I always forget what size they are and I just end up trying every single one until I finally get it right. That will do it for this week with the engine. Oh my god those oil pan bolt holes were a nightmare. I actually thought I was cross threading and cutting new threads or something. I wasn't. They were just that difficult. They were so crusty it was unreal. 2 out of 10 do not recommend. Everything else related to the engine will wait till next week when Junior's back full time. Um, tomorrow I may have something going kind of cool for his car. But that would be in a different video if it happens. So no matter what I did, I could not get my heads and intake to look decent. They are just dirty and pitted and just old. So I got some spray paint and it was supposed to be a nice raw aluminum color. As you can see, it was not. It is hillbilly chrome. Their idea of raw aluminum and mine are completely different. Here are the heads. Same thing. Oh well, I guess it's better than the nasty pitted look. This paint is probably not going to be very durable. It'll probably get greasy, nasty, and disgusting before long. But oh well, they look better than they did, at least for now. My valve covers got knocked over and chipped, so I decided to respray them real quick and that's it that is it for cosmetics now it's on to actually building an engine junior's still gone and unfortunately when he gets back i'm going to work the next seven days in a row so we're going to fast forward to the future eight days right and here we are in the future but my time machine sucks it's actually like two weeks in the future instead of eight days some things happened I tried to burn Chris Jr.'s car to the ground with an electrical short. Then we've attempted to paint it twice and gotten rained out. And so now I'm going to attempt to assemble my long block. Yay. I don't know what it is about that hillbilly chrome that I sprayed, but it would not stick to this Victor Jr. intake at all. I walked by two weeks after I painted this thing. Touched it with my hands and I had silver flake everywhere. Just everywhere I touched. The paint was just coming off. So I sprayed it with some clear coat to get it to stick. The heads are fine. The heads haven't given me any problems. But uh, yeah, the paint wouldn't stick to that intake at all. I don't know if it's the surface or what. I had it completely cleaned. But... So I gummed it up with some clear coat and that seems to have worked. But time to get this mess all together. The next step for me is to recheck my oil pickup tube tolerances my the the amount of space i have between the oil pan and the tube with the gasket in place just because i'm paranoid and if i forgot to mention it in my ramblings before cover up your screen before you put clay on this or else you're going to destroy your pickup tube fill up your oil pump with clay a couple of little things about this moroso seven quart pan that i have either forgotten or never knew i don't know which um it is so wide and so beefy that it does not run the back bolts so you do not have uh the the large bolt and the little bolt back here in the back i had forgotten about that um i'm a little bit concerned about that clearance it seems like that's a lot because this is torqued down also the dipstick tube pickup is so big you can't get a socket on this bolt but all the others are torqued down oh also it doesn't run the two small bolts up here for the front timing cover which i'm not bothering with right now but anyway this is bolted down the gasket is crushed 
like I said, I am concerned about that gap in the back. I think that's a byproduct of not having these rear bolts, but let's see what our clay check says. My tolerances were tight enough that it mashed the clay into the oil pan and didn't stick to the pickup tube at all. So let's see what that measures. As you've seen in the past, I have a mildly dented kind of warped oil pan. That is our back corner at our tightest area. That is a tighter clearance than my piston to valve clearance. So I'm not really worried about this. So in this back dented corner of the oil pan, I had less than a quarter inch of clearance, but it was like 0.19 inches of clearance. And then over here, I had like 0.3, so like a third of an inch of clearance. Uh, that's within spec from Rosso, so time to send it. Some of those pan clearance issues I had in the back, maybe this just massively thick gasket. You can see how thick that is sitting in there. I thought this was going to sit a little further down inside uh, the, the gasket area, but... I guess that's why I have so much clearance. This gasket's a little thicker and a little beefier than I thought. So I guess that'll be fine, but I'm probably going to run a little bit of silicone around it just because I'm paranoid. Look who finally joined us. You going to help me with this engine, boy? We're going to install the trick flow heads now. One thing I'm doing before moving on is I'm making sure that the head bolts will all go all the way into the bolt holes by hand. I've already tapped these bolt holes and I've cleaned the threads on the bolts just to make sure, but I'm just double checking. I want to make sure there's no resistance going into the head or going into the block rather. Felpro head gaskets are installed. They do tell you which way goes front. These are reversible. They say front on it. Just put them to the front. You're good to go. Time to put the heads on. Here's Chris Jr. beginning our torque sequence on our head bolts. Following the RP torque sequence specs, we've got our head gaskets installed. All of our bolts went in hand tight all the way down into the block. We've got ARP Molly Lube on the top bolts, and I put ultra gray thread sealant on the bottom bolts. Um, I know some people don't like that, but um, I really don't want any water leaking out my bottom bolts. And that's how we build Junior's engine. This is our 30 foot pound sequence. Then we're going to do 50. Then we're going to do 70 according to the ARP specs and hope nothing breaks. All right, there we go. Head number one is on. I couldn't film the full torque sequence because I had to hold the engine stand for Junior to get him up to 70 foot pounds. But number one is on. We double checked them. On to number two. And both heads are on. Both heads are torqued down. Oh man, you can see what that clear coat did to that cheap hillbilly chrome flake paint. Made it run everywhere. It looks horrible. Whatever. I don't really care all that much right now. But they're both torqued down. There were some nerve-wracking moments. Every time a bolt spun just half a second more than I thought it should, I was freaking out. I know ARP bolts are strong, but after your 100 pound son twists the head off one like it's a pretzel, you get a little nervous at times. But both heads are torqued down and double checked, and I'm ready to move on. Here's Chris Jr. setting our Trick Flow 1.6 ratio roller rockers. Turn, the, turn each cylinder to the base circle of the cam, where both of the lifters are down. Spin these till their hand, so they quit spinning by hand. Quarter turn with the 5 8 wrench and then set the lock stud. And that's it. We're going to do that 16 times. And that'll be all for the top half of the engine. It'll be interesting to see whether these roller rockers need a quarter turn or a half turn. Junior's crane cam roller rockers on his car, half a turn hangs the valves open. They need a quarter turn to be set perfectly, even though the instructions say a half turn. That took a little bit of experimentation to figure out. So we're going to start these at a quarter turn. And when we go to run it, it rattles. We'll know. Here we go. All right, here we go. All the rockers are adjusted. 
top end of the engine is assembled. Everything's turning over nice and smoothly. No piston to valve interference. And I believe she is ready to run. It has come time to do the front timing cover of the engine. Um, I am using an authentic 1960s cast 289 timing cover. But a couple little things you should know before you try to use one of these. First off, you've got to plug the front dipstick hole. Secondly, 289 timing covers did not come with these front water pump timing cover water jacket dowel pins. These holes were not machined for these dowel pins, so I had to drill them out to make this fit. But I was, I got this and I had it sitting around. I was too cheap to pay for a more modern one that's already machined for that. So we're going to go ahead and use this. A couple things about a 289 front timing cover is the front main seal comes from the inside instead of the outside. Um, so my front timing cover that's a kit, the gasket kit that says 289-302 came with one. I'm hoping I can hammer this into place. It's really close, but it's pretty tight. Also, I lost the bolts that hold the back plate of the water pump in place. This is the flattest, smallest bolt I've got, and it will not clear the front 289 timing cover here, these recesses. Those are not deep enough. I'm going to try to find some completely flathead bolts at the parts store, or else I'm going to have to come in here and machine this down because it will not fit. And these are pretty low profile bolts. Just won't do it. A few drops of oil and it seems to fit fine, but <clears throat> somehow I managed to knock the spring tensioner out of the inside. So I have to uninstall it, see if I can get this reattached and reinstall it. Good times. I managed to get that thing back in. I can't believe it. And it seems to have a pretty firm grip on the harmonic balancer. And I'm sure that'll never come back to haunt me ever again and never have to give it another thought. One thing I forgot to do that I wanted to do was turn this over by hand and make sure each cylinder is building compression. <sighs> it's quite a workout to get it to spin quick enough to build much compression. I'm getting 30 just spinning it by hand with a hand wrench. And uh, one of the other cylinders whoops, that I forgot to record kicked up near 60 when I spun it fast enough. So. I think that's about what juniors did when you're just turning it by hand. I don't think it's going to build much compression this slowly, but hopefully it's healthy. All right, so for the third day in a row, or my third day off in a row, we've been rained out from painting Junior's car. Now I'm back to working on the engine again. Ran down to a parts store, got the bolts to attach my fuel pump to the timing cover, and I found what I hope are going to be timing cover friendly water pump backing bolts. Got the most low profile bolts humanly possible and I think they still hit just a little on this 289 timing cover. I may have to machine this thing. Whoa, with a gasket I can actually see daylight under these bolts. They are going to clear. I am not going to have to machine the front timing cover. Thank God, finally a break. I definitely should have spent the money on a newer model 302 timing cover. I forgot this. Well, I didn't know this 289 timing cover was not machined for the pointer right here. So you can see the pointer is kind of mashed on there. It's not all the way in. And whatever reason, this bolt only went in a couple of threads into the block. And then it stripped the block out. Like it just barely touches in there. Probably a millimeter of space. <sighs> so I'm going to try to pull this out and tap it. See if I can get some better thread on there. But it'll only go on maybe one and a half turns if that. Alright. I was able to finally get that to bolt in and take up some slack. <sighs> I'm sure it's a future water leak. But let's hope not. Um, also... This is the probably the fourth or fifth time in a row I've had these ARP bolts. Some of them bottom out into the block before they're very tight. 
so I'm putting extra washers on them to take up the slack because like these top ones and that one and this one down here were bottoming out and uh, I was afraid I was going to snap them off and they just weren't taking up the slack so they were definitely future water leaks so Junior's car had that and my cars back in the day had that I don't know what the deal is but the RP bolts are always just a tiny bit too long right there all right everything is installed all the bolts snug down pretty well remember when doing this one or two ugga duggas will work no need for 10 and i like my ugga duggas so if i'm saying it you know you don't have to tighten them all that much but as you tighten each bolt in a cross pattern the bolt beside it's going to get looser and looser i had to go back here three or four times to tighten these things up and they kept tightening so that's all done, and I'm sure there's no more than three, maybe four water leaks in this thing. All right, I put a bead of oil-resistant gasket seal down, and I'm using a couple of bolts to kind of hold it in place while it dries and gets tacky. I am fairly concerned with what's going to keep it in place back here. But I'm going to put another bead of oil-resistant gasket seal across the top and then put the oil pan down. Well, I definitely went completely insane with the oil pan gasket seal. <laughs> I put entirely way too much everywhere. <sighs> Tried to clean it up, smooth it up a little bit. But Oh, another thing about this oil pan is you can't get a socket on these. Way too tight. You gotta use a hand wrench on those. I wish I'd have known I would have dented those and clearanced them a little. But... All right, the oil pan is sealed. Um, looks like it's sealed for life. Let's hope and pray we have oil pressure when I go to test it so I don't have to take this thing apart. After entirely way too long, I have this thing finally buttoned up. Got my oil filter on. I just remembered I need a fuel pump to block that off so I don't spill oil everywhere. Um, I cannot find my oil cinder unit extension for reasons. So I went down and I needed an oil gauge anyway, so I went and got some cheap oil gauges, plumbed it up, hoping that's going to take pressure. And I've made my unholy abomination to go down in here to spin my oil pump drive shaft. There it is. It's connected. It's hooked up. Now I'm going to pour oil and see if we have any oil pressure. All right, this is the most nerve-wracking part. I'm all set. Oh, God. Never more nervous than this. Hope and pray she makes oil pressure and that our lines and stuff don't explode. Oil spill everywhere, but mostly pray that she makes oil pressure. Ah! Yes! Victorious huzzah! Whoops, I accidentally cut that off early, but... Whoops, not good. She's making oil pressure. Hallelujah. Well, the victory was short-lived. Um, after kicking up to almost 60 pounds of oil pressure, we now have zero. I was just sitting here, spinning it up, trying to prime it a little more. A little oil came out. And as you can see in these push rods... There's no more oil coming out. Confirmed that the oil pump shaft is still connected. You can feel it in there. Um, you can feel it in there on the oil pump. And uh, there's no oil pressure being made at all. So I may have to take this whole thing apart to try to figure that out. Good times. There's an ever so small chance that I get out of this unfazed. I just realized my little socket on here stripped out and ripped out. So the socket now spins. So even though I felt like I had resistance, I may not actually have any resistance on the oil pump. So I'm going to have to go find a quarter inch long socket, see if I can spin this some more and hope and pray that the oil pump and the oil pump drive shaft are intact. Because I don't know if they froze up which stripped this out or if this is just that brittle that it stripped out or what but this is a good sign i was about to freak out i was already calling people trying to ask them 
What could have gone wrong that I lost all oil pressure? Look who finally joined us. We have a new socket. Let's try this out. Spin it, the boy. Oh, keep spinning it. Keep going. Oh, yeah. And is there oil coming up the top of the engine? 60 PSI. And yep. Just keep going until all the cylinders are good. There we go. I think they're all good to go now. I feel even better now. That's the burning smell I smelled. It wasn't anything in the engine or the oil pump. It was the drill. All right, I think we're done here. Good job, boy. How does that make you feel better? Because I smelled something burning and I was scared as my engine. I don't care about that drill. I care about the engine. Stupid question, boy. All right, we're good here. You can stop. Stupid father. How dare you? I'll be right back after this commercial break so and I beat more. Junior. There it is the next day, because as soon as we had oil pressure in this thing last night, we called it quits. It was, it had been a long day. We were both tired. And uh, now I'm going to come back here. I got to install the harmonic balancer and the intake. And that's pretty much it. All right. I drew in the harmonic balancer as far as I could, as far as it'll go. It looks about right. The pointer is in the middle of the balancer. It doesn't look terrible. Um, torqued it down so I won't really be able to tell if it's all the way in or not until I get a balancer pulley which I just realized today that I don't have so not exactly sure what I'm gonna do about that but when I get it and get the bolts I'll be able to figure out whether or not uh, this is lined uh, whether this is lined up or not if you remember earlier in the video I talked about how we were gonna port to the Victor Jr. intake to match the heads and all that yeah we're not doing that we're both working a lot we are both tired and I don't care like I said before I'm not gonna make money with this thing so it doesn't matter one thing I am gonna do though that is irritating me these Felpro gaskets no matter what I do on each side on this runner and this runner they both intrude on the head on the valve a lot or the intake runner um, on, on one side I don't like that I'm probably gonna trim all these because that's actually quite a bit that's two or three millimeters intrusion on the port and I can't stand that that needed quite a bit of trimming on each side I'm not sure why I did a just kind of a cursory search online and couldn't find anything about these heads needing their own gasket they're just as cast 170s off the shelf but that gasket needed a whole lot of trimming. All right, I got the gaskets clearance properly and I ran out of gray gasket seal halfway through sealing the intake so I gotta get some more and come back. Future Chris here. It turns out if I'd have gotten Felpro gaskets at 1262 instead of 1250 none of this would have been necessary. I wouldn't have had to trim my gaskets. The 1262 is the wider port gasket that would have fit these heads in this intake without any trimming or modification. So don't be like me. Don't trim your gaskets. Just buy the correct ones the first time. Also, just for fun, um, I cannot find the intake bolt kit that I plan to use for this. I found an intake bolt kit. The problem is there's two different bolts on it. Uh, Seven of the eight are ARP. Um, one of them is just a regular bolt. <sighs> Between that, my chopped up gaskets, running out of gasket seal, I'm sure I won't have any problems with any type of intake leaks. Nope. All right, got more gasket seal. I even took the step of putting some around our intake ports, you know, because I chopped up my gaskets and I'm probably going to have an intake leak. If you missed our last intake gasket install, I'm a big fan of putting studs in the intake or in the, on the heads for the intake. Then you just lower your intake straight down on the studs. It can't go sideways. It can't get crooked. Nothing could get messed up. Then you just take the studs out, put in your intake bolts. But just pick any four holes, two on each side, put studs in there, and the intake can't go on crooked. Everything just drops right into place perfectly the first time. 
Well, this one odd man out bolt was obviously way too tall, so I did what all professional real mechanics do, and I used washers to space it. Good times. Done. It took four passes to get the intake properly torqued down, but it is in place and looks beautiful. And there we go. It is all buttoned up. No, the carburetor doesn't actually work. It needs a full rebuild, but I put it on there because it felt good. <sighs> this feels good. This is very motivational. Now ready to bust my butt on the rest of the car. All right, and I think that's it for the long block. Um, before I can put it in white trash, I still have to get, I'm short motor mounts, transmission mount, clutch, all the bolts for all those. Um, oh, and the title. There's some issues with the title. White trash can't exactly be registered right now. So that's why I haven't put it all together and tried to get it rolling, but I am motivated now. So uh, this has really got me going. I really want to hear that engine run here soon. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is play around the carburetor and rebuild it. And at the same time, we'll be working on Junior's car and doing some stuff. But Thanks for watching. Take care.